Welcome to a lesson on 17.1, Angles of Rotation and Radian Measure. The essential question is, what is the relationship between the unit circle and radian measure? The underlying portion is the one that you should copy down. So in trigonometry, the angle of rotation is an angle formed by the starting and the ending position of the ray that rotates about its endpoint. Okay. So that's the angle rotation, right? But how is it measured? So angle in standard position in a coordinate plane when the starting position is on the other ray, the initial side of the angle is on the positive x-axis and has its endpoint at its origin. So basically what that means is that our initial side starts here. We call that initial side. And that's in a positive x-axis. And you have a terminal side, okay? Uh, at its endpoint is also at origin. So let's say this is the terminal side. And then when you measure counterclockwise from the initial to the terminal side, that's the angle that we're measuring. We measure it counterclockwise. Okay, guys? Counterclockwise. So that's the angle. Once again, we start with the initial side, which is on a positive x axis, going counterclockwise until you hit the terminal side, and that is the measurement of the angle. Coterminal angles are the angles that share terminal side. For example, let's say this is a 310 degrees. So that right here is 310 degrees. But if you notice the smaller one over here, guys, it went full turn, came back around to the same terminal side. So this is the terminal side right here. And the initial side is always the positive x-axis, going counterclockwise. Then it is positive, right? So we did the same thing. So here we started at the positive x-axis made a full turn, and then came back around one more time. So this measurement is 310 plus the full turn, which is 260 degrees, and that adds up to 670 degrees, right? So that angle right here is 670 degrees. Now, once again, this one is 310. This one right here went around full time, uh, full turn plus uh, 310 more so that gives you 670 right here but this one unlike the others is going from positive x axis clockwise till we meet here so that one turns out to be negative 50 degrees so basically we could say that therefore 310 670 and negative 350 are co-terminal angles. So how do you find the coterminal angles? Whatever the angle may be, theta plus 360 times n, where n is a, where that's an integer value right there. Okay, so now that we've defined what they are, uh, let's talk about the arc measure. Um, so I mentioned the word arc measure and yet the title says radian measure. Well, they're really related, okay? So everything that's on the line, you should be copying down. The radian describes a plane angle subtended by a circular arc as the length of the arc divided by the radius of the arc. And the measure of the radian is numerically equal to the length of an arc of a unit circle that it subtends, okay? And this part right here, guys, on a unit circle, r equal to one, theta is r. So, one radian is the angle that intercepts an arc of length one on a unit circle. Okay, so there's a lot of words here, but uh, they actually are talking about the same thing. Okay, so let's do this. If this is radius r and this is a theta, the formula that we're going to be using is that this s, arc length, is in fact theta times r. And this theta is measured in 
radians. Okay, and we'll see why in a second. And let's solve for this theta. If you do that, then theta is S over R. So the radian measure, theta, this angle right here, guys, is the arc length created by the two, um, the terminal side and the, sorry, the initial side and the terminal side right here. Uh, the arc length divided by the radius. Hmm. Now, if you think about it, they both are unit lengths, and those units cancel out. So what this implies is that radius, so radian, is unitless. It does not have a unit. It's simply a ratio of the arc length divided by r. So if s and r is equal to each other, then we could say that the theta is equal to 1. So if the arc length and the radius is equal to each other, we said that the radian is equal to 1. That literally is it. So if you could get a piece of stick, the length of the r, starting from this point, and you rotate it about, like this, in a circular fashion, that length right here, guys, this length, and this length is exactly the same. That's what a this is saying. So one radian is the angle that intercepts an arc of the length one on a unit circle, but the radius has to be one. Okay. So in a unit circle, uh, the radian of one has intercepted arc length of one. Two has two. If it's a three, there's three, and this half a circle right here guys is pi and pi is approximately 3.14 so when it says radian describes an angle subtended by a circular arc as the length of the arc divided by the radius the uh, radius of the arc is describing this relationship right here guys and one thing that you should remember right here guys is that full circle for radian is 2 pi and the degree measure is 360. From this, we're going to sort of figure out the relationship between the radian and degree conversion. So if this is the case, then pi is equal to 180 degrees, pi over 2 is 90 degrees, and from here, we'll figure out the rest, okay? So you really should commit these three to your memory and then some more coming up, okay? So here is conversion between the degree measure and the radian measure. Okay, so multiply the number of degree by this relationship, and multiply the number of radian by this relationship. And I'm going to go through each one a little bit, and here it goes. All right, so what is this equal to? If we multiply, as we mentioned earlier on the top right here, a pi is equal to 180 degrees. So whenever you're doing, it's kind of like in chemistry, dimensional analysis. If you're looking for, uh, go from degree to the radians, we want pi radians, but what is its equivalent measurement? 180 degrees, right? So in essence, this particular fraction is equal to one. So when you multiply by one, nothing happens. It just looks different. See so the degree sign on the top and the bottom, they cancel. Right? 20 goes into 180 how many times? 9. That's right. So 20 degrees, having multiplied by the conversion factor, uh, tells us that 20 degrees is equal to pi over 9 radians. Since pi is about 3.14, and that's 9, it's slightly more than one third. So on a unit circle, 20 degrees, it's about one third length from here to here. Okay, that's what 20 degree brings us. If it's 270 degrees, we multiply by the, uh, the converting uh, fraction. It says pi is equal to 180 degrees, right? The angles cancel, the degrees cancel. And then you ask yourself, 180 goes into, uh, sorry, 90 goes into 270 three times. Uh, 90 goes into 180 twice. So that is equal to 3 pi over 2. All right. So that's what that means.
But when I look at this, I actually think more along this line. There are 3 pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees, right? So when you have a circle, that's 90, 1, 2, 3, 90 degrees. So 270 is from here to here, right? Or 3 pi over 2, visually, to me, that's the easiest way to think about it. How about this over here? Um, I actually don't like to put a fraction this way. I apologize for that. Let me rewrite this as pi over 8, okay? So this is a radian, isn't it? I want it in terms of degrees. So 180 degrees we know. What is the equivalent measurement for 180 degrees in radians? That's pi, put in the denominator. So this measurement is just basically flip the version of this. So the pi's cancel here, guys. So what number divides both 180 and 8? That's 4, I believe. So that would be uh, 4 times 2, 4 times, and then 4's cancel. And 45 divided by 2 is 22.5 degrees. So basically, the pi over 8 radians is equ equal to 22.5 degrees. Why don't you pause? and try this question. Okay, we're back. So once again, uh, don't write it this way. That, that was my mistake, 4 pi over 3. Its conversion factor is 180 degrees over pi. Whatever we want to convert to should be in the numerator. So it's degrees, so that's 180 degrees. Its equivalent value in radians is pi. So that cancels right here. 3 goes to 180, 60 degrees. When you multiply these two, 240 degrees. So if you told me, if you said that 4 pi over 3 radians is equal to 240 degrees, that is absolutely correct. Okay, guys, so we will finish off the rest of the question in class, and there are a couple more questions, and we'll wrap that in class. Okay, have a good night.